Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about data-oriented design, and specifically um, the idea of having a struct of arrays versus an array of structs, right? So uh, when we're talking about something like a struct of arrays, this is a very classic data-oriented design approach. And if you think about something like an array of structs, this can often be, you know, seen as a typical, you know, object-oriented design approach. So we've got you know, say a whole bunch of a particular type of objects, right? So this could be, maybe we have a list of, of employees, right? And so it, we have, have a class that says an employee, and then we have an array of employees, right? So it makes very intuitive sense. In the opposite case, we have a, a struct of arrays, right? So instead of having, you know, for each employee, their own, say, unique instance of an object, what we have is say all the fields lumped together inside of an array inside of a larger struct. And so let's go ahead and see what that means uh, with a pretty simple example. And we'll look at the cost um, or the, the benefits of say data-oriented design in a simple example like this. So you can think of this simple struct as say being your employee class or your employee object. So employees will have a number of fields, right? And so we can have classes a lot of times that are going to be larger than the size of a cache line. Right, so in this case, I just put in 16 integers because that will make each struct, right, or each instance of the struct the same size as a cache line, so 64 bytes. And let's say I'm just going to do some pretty simple operation, right, to every single object that I have. I just want to say increment v0, right? Could have an increment for every single one of these uh, v, so v1, v2, v3, right? But a method doesn't actually add any space to the class, so just going to omit that for now. We're just going to focus on, say, doing this one simple operation, which is for every employee or for every instance of this particular struct, I just want to increment v0. Okay. So my alternate approach, right, instead of having a whole in structs that each have their own v0 through v15, well, why don't I have one struct, right, and now I'll have vectors, right? So now I have a vector for each of the fields, right? So I have a vector for V0, a vector for V1, a vector for V15, right? So I'll just resize it based on n, right? And so instead of requiring n objects, we have one objects, we have arrays inside, in this case are vectors, um, of size n. And just like the other case where we say we wanted to update right, V0 for every single object, in here we can have an update function, right? And all it will do is it will iterate, it will go over um, the entire vector in update i, or, or it'll update all the v0s, right? So it'll go through the v0 vector and update each of the fields by one or increment each of them by one. So we're gonna be doing the same amount of increments, but what we really wanna focus on is what's the performance difference between laying, it, laying out our data in two very different ways. Okay, so here, this will be our uh, benchmark for the array of structs version. So this is a more object-oriented approach. So we'll have a vector. It'll be filled with instances of this simple struct. So we'll use fill in to put in n of them into the vector. And then for each of the objects in the vector, we just call the increment. So, uh, and we'll do this for n is equal to 8 to n is equal to 16. And in this case, we're going to be shifting this over uh, 1 over by n. So it'll be 2 to the 8 to 2 to the 16. So it'll be a vector of 2 to the 8 objects and a vector of 2 to the 16 objects or through 2 to the 16 objects. So 2 to the 8 would be 256, 2 to the 16, 65, 536. And then we'll have a more data-oriented design benchmark. In this case, we just need to create one struct of arrays, right? The only the reason why we have to only create one is because it's filled with all those vectors that contain all the fields, right? So we don't need to create a whole bunch of uh, instances of objects, right? We just need one very big object. And then what we do is we profile the update of each field. And for this case, we just need to call update v0. And that's because update v0 actually goes through an entire one of these vectors and increments everything. So it may be intuitive to some people of which one will be faster and why, but let's go ahead and just profile it first and see what happens. All right, so in this case, I'll do G++, um, right? So we'll turn on a whole bunch of optimizations with O3 and then the L benchmark and LP thread are just required by Google benchmark. So I've written this with Google benchmark, right? And now let's go ahead and run it. So you see, this is the array of structs version. So the more kind of object oriented design approach so we have a whole bunch of instances of objects, right? And we just store them all in an array or a vector. 
And then we have the structive arrays uh, approach, right? Where we basically take out the field, right? A particular field, say V0 for all of the objects and put them together in a single vector, right? So even though, you know, in the other case, they belong to different objects, now we've just put them all together in a single vector. And we immediately see that this huge performance gap between this array of structs implementation versus the structive arrays. So kind of in the in the smallest case here for 256 instances of the object, right? So we have a vector with 256 of those simple structs. It takes about 101 nanoseconds to increment all the different values or 98 rather, uh, if we look at the CPU. And then for the uh, structive arrays, it only takes 36 nanoseconds, right? So this is about 3x performance. So what if we scale this up? So what about 65, 536, the largest case we test? So in this case, it takes about 13, uh, 136,000 nanoseconds, right? To update in objects versus 9K nanoseconds to update in fields inside of that vector, right? So why is this the case, right? And there's a number of ways you can kind of reason about this. You can just look at the code and kind of reason about what's going on here. We know that they're both doing the same, roughly this equivalent amount of work. They're all just really incrementing uh, uh, in integers, right? They're just for in integers, they're just doing plus plus on them, right? So they're not doing significantly different operations, right? And they're doing the same number of those operations. So it must be something to do with the data, right? So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of uh, some coarse grain profiling. So in this case, we'll go ahead and use perf stat. And you know you can specify exactly which stats you want to collect, or if you just want to dump a whole bunch of stats, you can keep adding dash D. So dash D will print out some stats, two dash Ds will print out more stats, and three dash Ds will print out a whole bunch of stats. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and print out the, um, Let's start with the array of structs, so the more classic object-oriented design, where we say we've got a vector, it's filled with uh, instances of a whole bunch of different objects, right? and we'll run it for three seconds, and we'll just check the largest case. So uh, we've got our performance data, so these are the performance counters that are printed out, so things like branch, branch misses. We should be missing branches at all because we have very simple for loops, so the branch pitch will be able to pretty much 100% uh, correctly predict that. Um, but what we see here is that for our decache load misses, we're at roughly 99%, right? So that, that should be concerning, right? We're at 99.35% of all L1 decache hits, right? So L1 decache load misses, 99%. That's pretty bad. Um, so let's go ahead and change it to the other version. So now let's look at the um, struct of arrays, right? So the more classic data-oriented design approach, struct of arrays and I think it's a capital O. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And what do we see here? So only about 12.6 uh, misses, 12.6% uh, L1 decache load misses, right, out of the L1 decache loads. So that's a pretty small number there. It's especially incredibly small compared to 99%, which is basically we're missing every single time. So what really explains this? Well, we can just go back to our code, right? Now that we know that we should really be considering like, why am I missing in the cache so often? Well, we really just need to think about the axis patterns when we're doing these uh, increments. So first let's consider the data oriented design approach, right? So from structive arrays, I'm calling update V0 and all update V0 does is it just goes through a vector and, it's a, and for every element in the vector, it updates it, right? But these are just integers, right? They're just gonna be laid out consecutively. So when I pull in one integer, right? I'm not pulling in one integer, I'll fetch an entire cache line of integers, right? And I'm going to be going to the next integer, right? So uh, next to each other in memory, next, or at the very next address. So I'm actually getting some great locality here. So when I access the first integer, I basically prefetch 15 other integers that I will need uh, immediately after. Okay, so that kind of explains why I've got a pretty low L1 decache um, uh, miss rate, right, for the data-oriented design approach. Now, why do I have almost a 99% miss rate on the more object-oriented design approach? Well, let's go ahead and look at our code, right? So here's our benchmark for a more classic OO approach, this array of structs. So here uh, I'm going over 
this vector now, but now this vector isn't of integers. This vector is actually of simple struct, right? Now, how big is simple struct? Well, we said earlier that we've got 16 integer fields here. So this is actually the entire size of a cache line. So what we've basically guaranteed is that the v0 for the first simple struct will not be on the same cache line as the v0 for the next simple struct. So if we were to say update all the v0s, right, for all of the simple structs, right, we will need a new cache line for every single one of them, right? So that's why our performance is actually so bad there and why we've got this 99% hit rate is because if we have in objects, we'll require in different cache lines because all the structs will be sitting on a different cache line. Now, there are different cases and different access patterns that make this simple struct version fine, right? Let's say we were to go through and for every single struct, we update all the fields, right? Now, all of these fields, so if we do it at the same time, if we say update v0, then update v1, then update v2, but we step through structs individually, right? Well, then we'd get the locality because all of these uh, 16 fields will be on the same cache line, right? So this is just one of the important things about data-oriented design and really understanding how your code is laid out, and more importantly, how your memory is laid out, right? And how, what your access patterns are actually doing. If we understand our access patterns, right? We don't really even need to look at the code here, right? We can really just tell, okay, I just need to know the size of these structs, right? And then I need to see, okay, I'm just going between different structs. I know immediately that they're going to be on different cache lines and the performance is going to be not so great there. And so this is how pretty simple uh, transformations that so we take, say, all the fields that are being updated, you know, together, right? If I take all those out, pack them all together inside of a vector, right? I can basically guarantee locality there, right? So this is a pretty common data-oriented design approach. But that's actually going to go ahead and do it for this video. So briefly, what we talked about is this difference of uh, structive arrays versus an array of structs. But you don't have to think of it as just a struct, right? This is more generally as just objects, right? Um, they're just objects, and if we have, say, an array of a whole bunch of different objects and we're going between those objects, right, they're going to be sitting on different cache lines, you know, as long as they're large enough. Um, so if you're interested in any of this code, this, of course, can be all found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we've got a whole bunch of videos on C++ programming, GPU programming, and CUDA, some Python programming as well. So this one is actually under miscellaneous code for now uh, before it gets moved into um, C++ Crash Course. So it's in DOD, DOD.CPP. So feel free to download this, play around with it. And hey, maybe check out your own code bases and see where there's opportunities to make, maybe make some improvements where you've got, you know, some maybe some bad access patterns and add some more data-oriented design to your code. All right, that's going to do it. I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.